So after driving the XB on the freeway the other day for a test run, uh, clearly the balancing I was using with the modified bubble balancer just isn't working. This is plan C. It's a hub, brand new, bought it from Rock Auto. Um, the idea is I'm going to use bolts. This is a 14mm by 1mm pitch thread. Bolted to some angle iron, it's actually T-shaped. I'm gonna have to make some cutouts. Rescued from an old overhead garage unit. Uh, got some washers I'm gonna put on, these studs that stick out. At least I know this unit's concentric, I just need to get it to be low friction when it's turning. Okay, so I've made a couple of angle brackets. Don't know how they're gonna support this. They fit this way on. Obviously, I have to make a cutout, which is going to involve a lot of hacksawing so that they can accommodate this hub diameter here. Same on the other side. And we'll be there next. Okay, so I've cut a notch out here, as you can see. I've already got a cut down this end, so I just have to join them. And it should be through. Here is the wheel balancing rig. And this one has the Corolla hub bolted into it. But you can take it out, bolt another hub in if you wanted. You have different wheels. So today I'm gonna try the balance for the first time. So I need to set this up so that when I have the wheel on here, it's gonna clear this. So I need to measure from here to roughly the back of the wheel. So they can spin okay, which is what I've got the tape measure for. It's a fun bit, lifting the tire up and sticking it on the hub. About that way. Pop. Come on, get on the hub. Kidding. Well, the reason it doesn't fit is that the Scion XB does not have the same size hub as the Corolla, like I thought it did. So I put the Corolla wheel on the hub and added oh, four and a half ounces of weight on one side, and it still didn't turn. So clearly, I need to get the hub friction down. There's just too much hub friction. So we'll work on that next. Behind there, there's some ball bearings. So this is a dual row angular contact ball bearing. And they've done something here where there's, there's no nut involved. They must have rolled this piece of steel over against the spring to give it the right preload. Uh, when it's preloaded, that takes all the slop out of the system, but it also induces a lot of friction. So there's nothing here I can loosen up to make this spin more freely than this. So this is a dead end. Right, so I'm continuing my efforts to try and reduce the friction of the uh, hub bearing assembly. And I believe the type of hub I have looks very much like this one, where it's got this rolled over end the bearing is captured by that rolled end and there's a seal in here. I think the seal here is creating all the friction. So my plan is I'm going to attempt to drill through this end right here. There's the seal and if I can drill a hole big enough maybe even cut a slot. So drill two holes and then join the holes with uh, my Dremel doing a cut Maybe I can cut this seal and pull it out right from here rather than try and take this rolled end off, which looks to be very difficult to do. So I did get two holes drilled, as you can see. And I was trying to join them with the Dremel, but the Dremel, I can't get the Dremel in there. So I'm relying on a hacksaw. Just going to cut down until I actually join those two holes together and I'll see if I can lever this big chunk out. After quite a bit of hacksawing, 
it looks like I've uncovered the seal, which I believe is this thing right here. And this is like the metal outer piece of it. So if I can snap that, I may be able to just pull it out. See, it's rotating. I've managed to split the metal part of the seal, and I'm now starting to pull this thing out if it will come. I've got it on the run now. Grab and pull. Grab and pull. Oh, come on. Okay. So it looks like I've got the seal out. I've probably got some metal debris in there still, which I'll have to flush out. But at least that seal shouldn't be causing friction anymore. The new rig that has the seal removed from the hub, you just put the five nuts on, just hand tighten. And I can already see that this wheel is out of balance. So I've not added any extra weight, taken any away, but it's doing what I expect it to do. It's going to show me the heavy spot in the tire, which is going to be down here somewhere. Great, I think I might have solved the problem. And I can now balance a wheel vertically, which is what I really wanted to do in the first place. Same as a motorbike wheel. So to balance it, first of all I put a piece of tape on with the wheel turning one way. There's the bottom. Now I'll bring this up to here. And drop. And see where it settles out. And that bit of tape will probably be further that way. There's always a bit of hysteresis in it. But maybe not this time, eh? No, there is. Okay, it seems to be about here. So the actual heavy spot is halfway between those two. Okay, so now I have three weights over in this position. And it seems to be pretty much in balance okay so I've marked the back of the spoke where I want to put the weights right here and I have these weights, these stick on weights which are actually a quarter ounce so I'm going to need six of these Right, so I'll put them equally spaced around there. And this is also fairly equally spaced in the in and out direction, so it shouldn't give me too much of a wheel wobble. And now it should be able to rotate and stop in any position. Slow it down a little. Extra weight. 